On April 21, 2010, an incident occurred at sea on the Carnival cruise ship Ecstasy. The story that subsequently hit the newswire was only partially correct. This is the rest of the story, from the eyes of the passengers who lived through it. After making its stop in Progreso and Cozumel, the Ecstasy was on its return voyage across the Gulf of Mexico. Just before 1 p.m., the ship made a hard right turn to avoid a partially submerged buoy that had lost its tether and was floating in the path of the ship. The sharp turn caused the ship to tip severely and resulted in serious injuries to passenger and crew. Carnival's public relations officials published a press release that minimized the trauma and applauded the crew's response to the possible danger at sea. This story, which subsequently fueled many national and local news stories, was far from accurate. My entire family was on this cruise. My wife, Deborah, our three sons, Christopher, Nicholas, and Patrick, our daughter-in-law, Linda, and our dear friends, Rain and Caitlin. On our last day sailing home from Mexico on the Carnival Ecstasy, I was basking in the warm sunshine, lying on the side of a hot tub in the center of the Lido deck. The ship was gently rocking back and forth as it had all week. The sun was finally out in full, and I was soaking up each drop of it calm seas, peaceful reggae music, and deep satisfaction knowing that my wife and I had provided a wonderful vacation experience for our family. As I laid there, I felt the boat rock to one side, and it just kept going to that side. I leaned up as the force of the tilting had almost sat me up straight from prone by itself. There was definitely something wrong, and in an instant I saw the swimming pool to my left start to empty itself over the side and onto the deck. From the rush of water, people were sliding, lounge chairs were sliding, and objects were sliding or falling from the left side of the ship to the right. Okay, what just happened here is we, as we swerved to miss some buoy that they apparently didn't see in the ocean, it caused the ship to camp 45 degrees, dumping all the water out of the pool, causing injury, things falling and breaking, people freaking out, panic. Terror on the high seas, on the carnival ecstasy. Look how empty the pool is now. People were clinging to their tables as water rushed down at them. Some of the tables gave way, their bolts ripping from the deck, sending the people in their table hurling towards the windowed wall of the deck. Through the windows, you could only see ocean, no horizon, as the ship must have now been canted at least 35 degrees. I this was the side of the deck that took the 45 degree dip, dipping down to the right, not quite touching the ocean, but you can see we got broken tables. I jumped to my feet and started to search out my family. I was waiting for some sort of emergency crew instruction to happen, but there was none. I saw no crew, heard no directions, except from other passengers attempting to provide that leadership. Everyone come to this side of the boat, I heard one man screaming to the people that were standing in shock or holding onto the rails for dear life. As people started climbing up the deck to the high side of the massive tilted ship, thinking that their weight might help to balance it back out, I saw my son Nicholas, and then my wife Deborah, and our daughter-in-law Linda. They had just been witness to a man whose arm was deeply gashed to the bone and spurting bright red blood. Deborah provided the crew member and the passenger who was helping the man with her cabin towel to help stop the bleeding. We gathered holding each other at the nearest railing as the ship started riding itself back level. The three feet of water that had dumped from the pool now came rushing along with all of the debris back towards the left side of the ship. You can see all the flooding that occurred on the ship here. Water still pooled up back in the dining area here. It wasn't that the ship took on water, it was that the, the pools emptied out onto the decks and that caused mayhem, destruction. But this reverse tilt was not nearly as sharp and violent as the first, and the ship seemed to have stabilized itself. All of this happened in about a minute. Still, our sons Christopher and Patrick and our friends Wayne and Caitlin were unaccounted for. <laughs> Yeah, 
People are stunned. The passengers near me, frantic, searching for their loved ones, trying to figure out what just happened. Was the hole breached? Should we head for our evacuation muster stations? Who knew, as there was still absolutely no direction, no control by the crew. Security crewmen were on the scene, but they seemed like they were busier talking in their native languages over their walkie-talkies than assisting. Some crew members began lighting cigarettes in front of the guests, as they seemed to be just as shaken up as the passengers. A couple of minutes later, the cruise director spoke over the intercom, assuring us that everything was okay and to stay out of the way of the crew members that were tasked with cleaning up after the aftermath of this near disaster. The captain then spoke over the ship's speakers, mentioning that a malfunctioning gyroscope caused the listing to port. This statement was never published in any press release, was omitted from the letter we found slipped under our cabin door, and was not included in any of the news coverage. The official story on Carnival letterhead that was in our cabins two hours after the event states, The action taken was absolutely necessary in order to ensure the safety of the ship and all aboard. Some guests did sustain injuries. None are life-threatening. These guests will be sent to a hospital tomorrow upon arrival in Galveston. Wife Deborah writes, The gentleman was standing by the stir-fry station at the buffet line. His arm had been wrapped in a white towel, now red blood soaked, up to his shoulder. The crew member was screaming for more towels. I handed her mine to help cover the lower portion of the gash that stopped just above his elbow. The cut was deep enough for me to see muscle and bone and there was a lot of blood. Amanda R. writes, My two-year-old son and I were on the Empress deck headed to our stateroom and right when we entered the hall I was knocked into the wall, thought the ship was just rocking until I realized it was still tipping. Then I noticed the room stewards jumping out of the rooms and hanging on to the door handles. Once I saw that I panicked. My husband was on the top deck on the side that was going down. He was even with the slides and was sitting right next to the railing with my three and nine-year-old daughters along with our friends and their nine, three, and two-year-old children. I ran as fast as I could up the stairs to get to the top deck to check on my family. My husband was able to get our three-year-old out of the way and my nine-year-old was hanging onto the slide. The water from the slides came flying out and pressed my husband and my friend's two-year-old up against the rails. Shelley Yu writes, My husband and I were on the ship when this happened. It was anything but slight. We were climbing the stairs from the Lido deck to the one above. We were at the very back corner of the ship. I started to notice the ship was leaning strong to the right. The gulf was getting closer and closer. Then we were pinned to the railing of the stairs. I looked behind us and saw what looked like a pipe sticking about three to four feet out of the water. I looked back to my husband and saw he was okay, then noticed water spilling off the boat and into the gulf, which ended up being the three feet of pool water lost, if this helps you picture the angle of tilt. I thought we were sinking. This was not a slight listing. I was afraid we were sinking. Just below the stairs we were standing on, a handicapped child in a wheelchair was up on one wheel leaning into the railing. The people in the Lido deck were screaming and children were crying, dishes were flying, and people were fainting. There was a broken arm, a heart attack, and in the gift shop where all the alcohol was stored, a shelf fell on a man. The rest of the night was mixed with fear and stories of fear. Three people were sent to the emergency room when we talked. Letitia V. writes, I fell on the, le on the deck by the stir-fry buffet, and the thing that held the dishes and trays fell by me and on the lady that was next to me. I saw a lady with a gash in her leg from the box that holds the trays. We both fell as it slid. When I went out to the railing with my cousin, there was a man holding a kid, and her back of her ankle had skin hanging off of it. I also heard in the dining room area people calling for help for someone that was having a heart attack. I just worried about finding my mother because she had had surgery just a few weeks before. This family... We group hugged and prayed out loud to our dear Lord Jesus, thanking him. Tempus fugit momento mori. That's Latin. For time flies. Remember death. And that, my fellow mortals, is the rest of the story. <laughs>